going live in I'm gonna guess three two oh hey three two one hitting the button come on there we go sweet hey hacksters what's up it's MCU Monday and so I have an unboxing for you uh, this is the Avnet Xilinx and 96 boards collaboration board called the ultra 96 and it's pretty sweet and we're gonna find out why in just a second but first I want to open this up and have a look at what's on it. I've actually been carrying it around. Uh, I took it to China with me in a suitcase in hopes that I'd get to do a video on it while I was there, but uh, that did not work out, so it's a little crumpled, but that's my own fault. Uh, it's a beautiful package that obviously prioritizes design, uh, and you will see how powerful this thing is in just a second. Uh, also remember, tune in tomorrow. We have an interview with Robert and Sahaj about, uh, more specifically, what this thing can do, and also some live demos, which should be pretty sweet. All right, so in we here we have some protective foam packaging. Thank you so much. That is very necessary with the kind of life that I lead. Uh, what do we got here? We've got a description page that's got tons of cool info on it, showing us exactly what is on here. Um, that might be useful for backup. Uh, all the warranty information and a getting started guide. Fantastic. This looks really well thought out, like it's not too much info, like a fire hose, but it's going to be just enough to get us started here. Uh, you've got a, a micro SD card with the operating system on it. This thing runs on Peta Linux, uh, and it comes on a little pre-programmed card for you, which is pretty nice. Oop. Yeah. Uh, we'll send this guy with an adapter so you can mess around with it on your computer if you want. Oh, I'm just gonna flip that anywhere. <laughs> Sorry. Oh boy. Um, pretend that didn't happen. We've also got some little standoffs here. Uh, so 96 boards is a standard that we'll look into in a second. And uh, there are a bunch of different mezzanine boards, which are basically the, the same idea as shields for Arduino or like, uh, you know, capes for BeagleBone, etc or hats for Raspberry Pis. It's like a daughter board that plugs in. Ah, oh, this voucher is proof that you are entitled to a Xilinx software design tool product. Hold on to this because this is some pretty awesome, valuable software uh, and you can use it to go and, oh, <laughs> don't look at my code. Also pretend that never happened. You didn't see that, no screenshots. <laughs> uh, here's the board itself, enclosed in an anti-ESD bag beautiful. I hope that's not a super special licensing code as well. <gasps> oh, look at this case. That is spiffy. I didn't know it came with this. That's gorgeous. Um, so yeah, we have a little fan in here to keep it cool. Dude, this goes like several steps beyond your usual little aluminum heat sink kind of setup thing. Wow, cool. Um, bunch of stuff on there. Uh, so this has a ton of different ways to plug stuff in. Not only are there the mezzanine boards I mentioned before, the basically little daughter boards, uh, where you've got um, Grove connectors and things that you can plug in, as well as a bunch of sensors, uh, but also it has, let's see if we can just go around here, you just, we put the little micro SD card in with the OS on it. Uh, not sure what you are. That's cool. Oh, it's a little couple of diff switches with some Kapton tape over it, some little RX and TX? No, what is it? Don't know. Uh, little dip switches there that are protected from your prying fingers. Uh, little um, mini display port connector here. You've got three USB ports. This one is an upstream micro USB uh, type B. Uh, uh, no, it's USB 3.0 micro type B. I always get that wrong, uh, but it's super weird. Uh, but this is your upstream connector that basically allows it to connect to a host computer. And then these two uh, allow you to connect peripherals to this board. So you got three USB 3.0 ports, which is pretty gorgeous. Um, it's powered by a Xilinx Zinc chip, which we'll look at in just a second. You've got a 40 pin expander connection, and that's the sort of lower speed one. And then you've got a 60 pin expansion connector, which is your high speed one. Besides that, you have a spot for a 12 volt barrel jack, which I happen to have here. I'm not gonna plug it in right now. We're gonna look at that tomorrow. Um, but that basically provides power all over the board. Uh, yeah, and then you have your micro SD card, like we mentioned before. And then if you wanted to add another mezzanine board on top of here, you would unscrew these guys, stick the little standoffs, uh, the tiny ones on top. 
uh, screw them into there from the top, and then, you know, screw your other thing on top. So it's all very stable. Uh, it looks like not only did they think about the design of the board, but also how, like, the whole ecosystem that would live inside your whole embedded system. So, uh, you know, everything from the, the durability of it to the heat dispersion, whatever you would call that. <laughs> uh, yeah, did, that, did I miss anything? We've got the da -da -da -da, USB 3.0 type micro B upstream port. I, that's so easy to stumble over. Oh yeah, wireless LAN and Bluetooth, enable LEDs. You do have four uh, user programmable LEDs on here. Let's see where those guys are. Probably says it on this little thingy. Power on LED, 12 volt input power. Uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth for user LEDs. Oh, they're down in here. Tucked away. Ha, huh, cool. Um, da -da -da. Then this is the LEDs for the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and LAN. Or uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. <laughs> uh, your da -da -da, we did that, we did that. Int, in it, B LED, done LED. Oh, cool, little feedback things. Uh, we did those boot mode switch. Ah, that's the two dip switches that we saw. So that's, uh, so you can decide what mode to boot it into. Cool, you got the 96 boards logo and the sweet little Xilinx logos. Okay, okay, enough of this. Uh, let's go look at some hard cold facts. So here is the board uh, on 96boards.org. What is 96 boards, you ask? Uh, it's a standard that is designed to make it really easy to develop, to basically take any system on a chip, especially ones that, uh, that are ARM-based, and drop them onto a board that already is designed for you, uh, that has all, you know, where all the outputs should go and stuff in the GPI opens and whatever, so that it's really easy to take a new chip and make it available for people to mess around with uh, and build on, which is pretty cool. Good for rapid prototyping, hobbyist projects, etc. at reasonable cost. Some of you are going to say that $250 is not a reasonable cost, but wait until you see what all this can do. It's, uh, you know, as always, you get sort of what you pay for. So, you've got this Xilinx Zinc Ultrascale Plus SoC, which we'll look at in just a second. It's an MP SoC, which stands for Multiprocessor System on a Chip. It's got an ARM core, as well as uh, an FPGA type thing that talk to each other. Uh, you've got two gigs of RAM, you've got the micro SD card, etc. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, we talked about all this actually. <laughs> and in a pretty small size, like you saw how that was, right? Uh, Avnet has our own page about it, but uh, that includes this sort of data sheet that will tell you a little bit more that you can print out and post up by your desk if you're you know, dreaming about it in the months to come. It's got a block diagram showing you how it all works. And uh, target applications include like artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotics, embedded computing, things like that. Uh, looking at the chip a little bit, the uh, I believe this is the Ultrascale Plus EG. Um, so it's got a quad core ARM Cortex A53 platform running up to five gigahertz. Do, 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 do. Um, ARM Plus FPGA architecture for differentiation, analytics, and control. Uh, it runs on Peta Linux, which is interesting. They have a wiki about it over on the Xilinx site if you're curious about it. They've got a getting started page as well as some extra info. Um, you can learn a bit about the design flow. We're probably going to talk about this some more tomorrow with Robert and Sahaj. Um, and then this is the license that you saw, and please don't steal my license key. I'd like to use that. Thanks very much. Uh, <laughs> so it's a plugin for um, Eclipse, the Eclipse IDE, that lets you build things with uh, OpenCV, uh, full Zinc SOC and MPSOC systems with embedded C, C++, and OpenCL applications. Um, accelerate a function in programmable logic with a click of a button, that's your FPGA bit there. Supports bare metal Linux and a free RTOS as a target OS. Did I miss anything? Let's see, we looked at the chip, we looked at 96 boards, yeah. So, uh, you know, in this case we're expanding, uh, I think, the Xilinx chip, uh, but 96 boards in general, you can look at all their uh, available ones on their site. They've got a few different types of editions, consumer edition, enterprise edition, IoT edition, uh, depending on what exact uh, 
abilities you're looking for and, and like low power, whatever. Wireless things, size, you've got a Dragon Board version, uh, obviously the Ultra 96 that we're talking about right here, a bunch of expansions, including an audio one with Grove uh, outputs, um, an Ethernet card. <laughs> You've got a fingerprint reader that you can attach to this, uh, a neon key, which is like a bunch of sensors that you can expand it with, and a bunch of other cool stuff you can check out on the 96boards.org site. So yeah, uh, it seems like a pretty powerful, neat little device, and I can't wait to get started playing with this. Uh, again, if you are curious about what exactly you can build with this and you want to see it in action, then tune in tomorrow. I'm going to put a Zoom link underneath this video, uh, and we're going to do it live there, and then I'm going to put the recordings up on Facebook and YouTube for everybody who is late to the party. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. Have an awesome rest of your MCU Monday. We'll catch you tomorrow. Ciao.